Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Net DevOps Live. We are here in Season 3, Episode 7, and joining me today is George Kobar, Senior Community Advocate with Elastic, to talk to us all about kind of the, the logging elements of our network automation and Net DevOps journey. Um, I am not um, going to be shy about this. This is one of the episodes all season I've been looking forward to, and George has pulled out nothing but awesomeness for us. He's put together an amazing demo pulling together resources from the DevNet sandbox and then showing how we can gather logs into the Elastic stack and get some really great visualization. Now we're gonna do some work after today's session to kind of gather that up and put it into kind of a learning lab format so folks can replicate it. So stay tuned for that, but the demo is going to be fantastic. As always through today's session, if you have any questions, you can use the questions panel inside of the webinar. I'll be monitoring those questions, gathering them up, and then when George is done with the presentation and the demo, we're gonna chat for a bit and get as many of those questions answered as we can. As always, uh, stick around after the fact for those and we will go in. Uh, with that, I'm gonna pass it over to George so he can take us away. Thanks, Hank. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is George Kobar. And again, I'm a uh, senior community advocate uh, at Elastic. And I've been um, within the industry within, uh, I'd say about uh, 15 years or so. So I've got a little time on my belt. Uh, some of that time has been spent as a, um, uh, you know, troubleshooting network issues, sp uh, specifically within virtual environments. So, you know, uh, Cisco networking is is definitely near to dear to my heart and transitioned over to Elastic and, and, and hopefully taking a lot of that knowledge that I had, you know, 10 years ago or so and, and applying it to here. So I'm very happy to, to speak with all of you and, and thanks for having me, Hank. I appreciate it. So again, yeah, my, thanks for coming. Uh, this is logging and back again, a network uh, engineer's journey with, with ELK, or uh, as we like to call it, the Elastic Stack. And I'm very happy to be here. Um, so it wasn't too long ago that monitoring and troubleshooting network issues uh, resulted in similar views. Um, I remember my days back in support running TCP dump on two different Linux VMs, trying to find the network issue uh, from the virtual networking was it was the issue with the, the the networking, the host, or is it something upstream? Um, typically, it's like, hey, let's jump on the syslog server and maybe do a tail dash f or, or try to find, uh, you know, uh, you know what the issue was. While this method of troubleshooting worked for a lot of monolithic apps, the industry is move, uh, quickly moving away uh, from this application deployment model to microservices. How can you troubleshoot network issues on ephemeral infrastructure or applications or containers within Kubernetes or OpenShift? This is something to add to the fire as well. How do you troubleshoot network issues when approximately 39% of containers only live for less than a minute? And this is according to uh, Sysdig in 2019. So, hey, let's send all this data over to syslogs, all right? So, uh, you know, for most organizations and, and specifically some organizations that I've been a part of, we heavily uh, relied upon syslog to send all of our network data uh, and our device data to syslog for us to be able to, to view back and, and look to see what's going on. Um, but the problem is, you know, you know, this is me, for example, looking through errors on a 7.78 gig syslog file. I mean, a lot of that is just, uh, you know, too large for you to search for. And this is just plainly a search problem. Um, you know, if you have to search for issues or take time to look for logs or, or you're, you're not sure exactly what you're looking for, you know, this is a difficult problem. Well, the good news is Elastic is a search company. So I want to go in a little bit detail of who Elastic is, and then we'll kind of go straight into a demo and, and, and showcase a lot of this. So the Elastic Stack or the Elk Stack is an open source technical foundation for search, which was created by Elastic. And there's four main components that I want to, to, to go through. Um, so Beats, which are lightweight data shippers that send data into Elastic Search. And that's what we're gonna be using primarily today, these lightweight data uh, shipping agents that we install on our syslog server. Um, Logstash is a server-side data processing pipeline um, and both of these, the Beats and Logstash, is that what we consider the, the ingest layer or how to get data into Elasticsearch. Um, so Elasticsearch is a, dis, uh, a distributed RESTful search in, and analytics engine. And this is also as the data store. Now, this is the data that you are taking from your environment and you're loading it into Elasticsearch. It's your data and your cluster that you're, you're utilizing. And then finally, at the, the, the last layer is Kibana, which is the visualization layer 
And this is where visualizing our data into different dashboards and visualizations that we can kind of extrapolate what's going on within the data or what kind of stories can we tell within the data. You know, so we're, we're, we're looking at, you know, reliably, securely take all the data from any different source, any different format, then search, analyze, and visualize in real time. And all of this is an open source. So it's something that you can use and consume today. So at Elastic, uh, we see commonly three different use cases. Uh, we see enterprise search, uh, observability, and security. Now, of course, those use cases are not uh, the only use cases we see people use uh, our technology. We saw a lot of different use cases, but these are pr primarily the three that, that we see. And what we're focusing on today is the observability. But uh, enterprise search really is, uh, if you want to use search as a part of your application, like uh, Uber, they use Elasticsearch uh, in the back ground to find um, passengers with uh, with drivers and and you know based upon what uh, uh, based upon what value they have uh, or you know what um, um, excuse me what you know uh, what rate of service they want and you have Yelp you know for folks that are looking at um, then looking for a restaurant near to them that takes credit cards and and you know uh, what's close to them they use also Elasticsearch. Of course, observability will go into a little bit more detail um, because I think observability really relates to, to what we're trying to accomplish today. But security is also uh, a huge use case for us, doing threat, uh, threat hunting analysis, um, identifying different actors, you know, um, seeing different changes within the logs or events that would be uh, deemed as out of the normal uh, or suspicious activity. So these are definitely some things that uh, we're, uh, we're developing uh, turnkey solutions. So it's something that you could use and consume quicker um, uh, than if you were to try to do it yourself. And there's a lot of ways that you can deploy Elasticsearch. So if you want to do self-managed, which we're kind of doing today, uh, you can run it in, let's say, in um, on bare metal uh, as a Java process or uh, in a container or on top of Kubernetes or on a virtual machine. It doesn't matter. It's, it's something that you could deploy within your own environment, your own lab, and, and then do that from there. In Elastic Cloud, let's say if you don't want to deal with the infrastructure, you know, maybe as a network team, you say, hey, I want to send some of my network data, and I don't want to manage the Elasticsearch cluster or the infrastructure. This is just something as like a, um, a proof of concept or, hey, I, you know, we want to have, uh, uh, we don't want the infrastructure team to be burdened around something additional to add. You can use our Elastic Cloud. So it's a service as an offering, or Elasticsearch as an offering. And it's on Amazon, Google, and uh, Azure. And then we have different orchestration tools. So if you want, uh, if you have the need to deploy multiple Elasticsearch clusters, you could do that as well. So there's Elastic Cloud Enterprise, which allows you to do a lot of the, um, hey, I'm going to deploy, you know, different clusters maybe for different use cases. Um, and then the other thing is uh, we've also done an open source Elasticsearch on Kubernetes. So it's something that we've we've released in the last year that you could deploy Elasticsearch. Uh, on Kubernetes and deploying multiple clusters. So there's a lot of different options on how to deploy it. And again, we're going to be discussing more on observability. And um, we've commonly hear, um, you know, the uh, three pillars of the observability, which are logs, metrics, and application performance data. And individually, these different types um, tells an important story of, of, of just knowing what's going on within your environment. Oops. And at Elastic, what we do is we like to call this the uh, observability. Um, so it's kind of like this, uh, you know, logs, metrics, APM into a nice, delicious sandwich for you can eat. And what's nice about this is, uh, uh, you know, sandwiches are really good, but it's something that if you bring all these 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 uh, components together, and which I'll show you that in just a minute, it can give you a, a unified view of what's going on with the environment, including, um, you know, with, with, what's inside the networking environment. So let's jump uh, right into the demo. Let's kind of uh, uh, work through this and uh, and see what we can come up with. So uh, Hank was so gracious to uh, stand up um, this Net DevOps Sandbox Lab for me, as uh, Elastic is a distributed company, and we're primarily a lot of our infrastructure happens to be in cloud. So I was looking at, hey, maybe I should try to you know uh, you know. Uh, wipe off the dust off my old Cisco switch and uh, get that up and running. I'm like, well, you know what? Maybe I can reach out to Hank to get a different lab. So this is the, the lab environment that we're going to be using today. Um, you know, you can see that we, we have an ESA, a couple edge, core routers. Um, and you'll notice on the right-hand side, we have DevBox or the developer workstation. And that's where mostly I'm going to be deploying the, the Elasticsearch and Kibana components to. 
And basically what, what Hank has done, he's, he's set up syslog data that's being sent into a container on DevBox that's doing syslog-ng. So we have this uh, this dev box here that all the, our syslog data is being sent to. And if this is not your organization, um, bear with me. There's other ways to actually get syslog data into Elasticsearch. But the syslog and uh, ng uh, Docker container is writing uh, these messages onto this dev box container. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana as Docker containers. And it's just something that you could easily uh, deploy and upgrade. And it's a real uh, neat way to, to keep that contained. Now, when I did, one of the things that I did when I deployed the, the Docker container is I just did a Docker pull and the repo. And the version that I did at the time was 7.62. But since then, we've already released 7.7. .7, so you can do the, the latest there. Um, so I did that for both uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana. Um, now, uh, the, the containers that we have here, it has the 30-day enterprise or the features trial um, if you want to try some enterprise features along with that. But if you want just the exclusive open source, you can go to docker.elastic.co and, and grab that information or grab that container from there. And, and basically what I did is I just did a, a Docker run and I detached that um, and I specified the ports that are needed for Elasticsearch, which are is 9200 and 9300. And I set an environment variable, um, discover.type is a single node. I'm not to go into too much detail of Elasticsearch, but it is, it is distributed uh, clusters. And you can deploy multiple clusters, and there is built-in redundancy at the, app, at the application layer. But for this uh, intent and purposes, I just deployed one. And then what I did is um, I ran, made sure I did a Docker PS to make sure it was running. And I, I took note of the Docker ID because I'll need that for Kibana. And one of the things, once Elasticsearch is up, what I did is I did a quick curl command to make sure that the cluster is up and healthy. And you can see here that status is green, and the number of nodes as we have is one. Obviously, it's not against the best practices for, uh, you know, for in production, but this is just for a, a demonstration. And of course, we don't have any data that's that's loaded in here, um, like the shards or anything else. Um, but we did get a green, which is good. And notice uh, the IP address I'm using is 10.10.20.50, which is actually that dev box. And one thing to note, once you stand up Docker, it's defaulted to uh, uh, be, uh, you know, Elasticsearch is meant to be listening on that interface. So you don't have to configure the networking um, to specify IP address to you. So it automatically uses that. Um, so one thing I'm going to do here is uh, I'm not going to attempt the, the demo uh, gods today. I did record a video, uh, but we'll go into a live demo as well. But I want to just go to show, uh, show this real quickly. So now what I'm going to do is I did Docker PS. Um, and then the Docker name has changed uh, since I've done that. But I'm going to go ahead and run Kibana here. I'm going to run that as detached mode. I'm going to specify the port for Kibana, which is 5601. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a dash dash link. So I'm going to link the Kibana container and the Elasticsearch container together. Um, and I'm actually specifying the container ID and then um, you know the Elasticsearch. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, uh, specify the repo where I'm, I'm grabbing this from. And it's Kibana and Kibana.7 um, in the version 7.62, which was the latest at the time. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. Perfect. And then just to make sure that it's up and running here, I'm going to go ahead and just do a, a PS as well. Right. So now we see our Elasticsearch and our Kibana uh, containers. So now what I could do is, uh, since Kibana is up and running, that's the visualiz uh, visualiz visualiz <laughs> visualization layer of that, uh, of, the, of the stack. I'm going to go to 10.10.20.50 over port 5601. And there we go. And that's the Kibana uh, screen that we have here. And notice here, there's kind of two different options that you're presented with. It's, you know, hey, you can try your sample data or explore your own. And um, sample data is great because it gives you kind of a, a good catalog or some dashboards to use right away just to start exploring what Kibana is uh, about. So it gives you some e-commerce data, some uh, web traffic data, and some infrastructure logs for you to try. What we're going to do is we're actually going to um, explore our own data. We're going to um, ingest that syslog data into Elasticsearch. So now what we're going to do is um, I've installed what's called FileBeat on the CentOS uh, dev box. And the purpose here is I'm going to send this file beat data into the syslog uh, server. And then uh, the beat, uh, because it's a lightweight data shipper, it's going to read the files, and it's going to ship that data directly into Elasticsearch. And then from there, um, it, it is, uh, then I'll be able to visualize some of that data. 
Now, one thing that I want to talk about um, is that's not the only way of bringing data into Elasticsearch. I think traditionally we've seen a lot of people uh, hear Elastic as the Elk stack or Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Well, Logstash, uh, what you could do here, uh, this is just an, a different way of bringing data into your uh, into Elasticsearch, is you could take all the syslog data and send it directly into Logstash. So Logstash would maybe be another uh, VM or it could be a container. And then what you do is you would specify the syslog output and that would be brought uh, your data into Elasticsearch. So if you're doing a lot of browsing, looking around how to configure it, that's one way you, you could do that. Another method of doing that is um, you could send all the syslog data directly into the beat module, or which would be file beat. And what we've done is we have this Cisco module, um, and it will look for uh, any of the uh, host and port information from the syslog. So it'll actually you know, get that information um, from, via the network and then ship that data in directly into Elasticsearch. So there's a lot of different ways on how to get data into it. Um, one of the things I want to do is, it, in my opinion, it's the the easiest barrier to entry to get, you know, if you already have syslog data, you have already files located somewhere, let's not have, uh, let's have FileBeat just uh, read that data and send that to Elasticsearch. So I think, I think that's a lot of organizations where they're, uh, where they're at today. So again, we're sending that data into Elasticsearch. And then what we're going to do is, is Kibano automatically is connected into Elasticsearch. And we're going to be able to visualize some of that data. Um, so once you're presented that screen, you know, would you like to explore your own? You'll you'll see the screen that says, you know, would you like to add APM data, logs, or metrics, or maybe security data? If you select uh, add log data, then you know then we'll see kind of uh, the different integration points that we have, and this is just focused on logs. You know, if you go to all, and I'll show you in the, the live part of this, um, we have a lot of different integration points, and we have a lot more that's not listed just right here. If you go on to our integration points or beats on our Elasticsearch or Elastic website, you'll see lots of different uh, 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 beats that are configured by Elastic and by, by the community. Um, but these are just some great ones that are uh, give you some quick integration points to, to, to have you follow along. But if we go to select system logs, um, then there's this nice breakdown of how to get installed. So uh, CentOS, it's an RPM. What we're going to do is we're going to run a curl command, and we're going to install that um, pseudo RPM and the file beat module. And if we go on to the next snippet, it's going to ask us to edit the YAML file that's uh, located in Etsy. Now, um, my apologies if this is a, a little small on the right-hand side of the uh, of my configuration file. I'm going to share the, uh, a GitHub link with you that shows all my configurations, so you can kind of copy and paste if you want, um, which is you know will be easier for you. But the, really, the main point here is, is we're pointing Elasticsearch to our IP address in Kibana, and we're using the, the, the username Elastic, and the password is ChangeMe. Again, it's, it's not really best practice, just for, for lab and kind of evaluation. And then what I'm doing is I'm adding some pieces into this to kind of add, uh, enrich some of the data, like uh, the file be auto discover. We know that containers will change names. Um, IDs and so forth. So we have an auto discover to kind of pick up some of that data automatically. Again, don't worry about this. Uh, I'll have all this configuration within GitHub so you can look. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to enable the system, and we're also going to enable the module Cisco. Um, that's part of the the data that we're going to grab uh, from the Cisco ASA and some of the, the network information. And at the very bottom of that, it says check module. So once you run everything on uh, what I ran on the dev box and you run uh, check data, then we should get this green check box here. And you know, kind of show you that here, I'm gonna play this video. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this snippet, which is a file beat setup and sudo file service uh, to, to start the service here. And it's loading dashboards. And um, basically, that's, that's one thing I do want to point out here real quickly, is um, the uh, uh, one of the advantages of our beats over, let's say, Logstash um, is that we're able to, um, you know, when I'm running this setup, we're actually installing um, some pre-canned dashboards into Kibana. So it's something that you can start to look at right away and say, hey, what kind of data am I, am I getting? What kind of visualizations am I seeing? So what's nice about that setup here is that I'm, I'm um, uploading not only the dashboards, but I'm doing the pipelines and, and, and getting it going. Um, so now what I'm doing here is I'm just starting up the file beat service. All right, 
and we're, we started up. And then now if I come back to Kibana here and I should be able to hit that check data and we should, should get a green light that says, yep, the data is successfully received from this module. So now I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the, uh, the live portion here in just a second. Um, fingers crossed, it's live demo. So we'll, we'll see what, what happens here. Uh, give me one second here. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Okay, now, uh, so now when we look at the, the left live portion of this demo here, I'm actually going to come over to uh, Kibana. And, and what I'm doing is I have a VPN from my home machine onto the Cisco lab here. Um, so there might be a little lag just over the VPN. And of course, everyone's learning from home today, so that should be fun. Um, but notice here we had the ad log data, and then at here is that system logs. And then we're going to go ahead and check data that has that green module there. But I'm going to go ahead and go to the system logs dashboard. So this is a pre-canned dashboard that was installed by Beats. And some of the things that we could see here off the bat is, hey, we're starting to see data. And um, one of the things we can see is a breakdown of um, the raw messages here. Um, so if you actually kind of expand this window out, we can see we're seeing uh, messages from DevBox and the processes file B. And here's some messages that we get from, uh, from the syslog. Uh, we also can see now you'll notice here um, it's kind of jumping ahead i have a couple other beats that are installed and we'll talk about that in just a second um, but one of the things i'm going to do is i'm going to jump over into what's called the logs dashboard now one of the things that you'll see um, you know with a lot of sys uh, syslog data is hey you know i could do a lot of this uh, and look through the data that i have right now maybe using some of the different uh, management tools for example there's um you know, uh, solar ones, for example, you know, I can start looking through logs and figuring out, you know, why to do that. So I'm going to show you just the same like feature functionality now, but then start to kind of add some of the um, the whipped cream and the cherry on top on, on top of that on why this is, you know, a, a great solution. So one of the things here, uh, one of the things here we'll want to do here is uh, we start to see uh, some some data. Um, so we have our the date of when the data was ingested, the event data. You know, for example, this is coming from the Cisco a ASA, and here's the uh, uh, the original event data um, that we're seeing. So we get a lot of um, um, you know process, the buffer rate, and so forth, um, and the host name, the client IP, and the message. So there's uh, the fail to get message, I think that's from uh, the Cisco ASA. It's not sending messages every time and we're expecting it. We're just saying, hey, we didn't receive it. We're just uh, looking for that. But let's go ahead and start looking for some information here. So maybe let's go ahead and take a look, let's say for um, um, host.hostname, for example. Um, and we can start looking for, um, you know, if we wanted to say, hey, if there's a, particular switch that I'm looking for that has a problem. Um, or if I, may, I know of uh, a service or something, and we're bringing this log data into Elasticsearch, um, what we can start doing is, um, you know, hey, let's let's pick up this IP address of 10.10.20.171 and see if we can try to find this data. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and run this. And, and basically, Elasticsearch is a search engine, and we're searching through all this data to find uh, what we're trying to look for. And one of the things here we can find, um, uh, let's see here and try to enter that one more time. Now we can see that all of the the logs from this host name 10 10 21 71 and now is 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 is, calling, uh, is pulling up. Now let's go ahead and say um, we want to look for event severity. You know it's not listed here. We have different rows of data sets. Um, we can come over to settings and you know I'm I'm actually pulling all of the log data um, into Elasticsearch so that includes you know log messages, system messages, um, and of course our syslog messaging. But if I want to come to log columns, I can go ahead and add a column, and this is now enriching more of that data. So let's say I want to go ahead and do uh, event uh, dot severity because I know um, when we look at, oops, if I misspell it right, here we are. Um, let's say I want to um, make sure that I, I capture a specific event um, or the severity event, um, you know, because that will be very helpful. If hey, I want to look to see any you know top tier events that are coming through, you know, what will that look like? Now I'm actually going to grab this and kind of pull it towards the top here. So then I have this on the left-hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. Okay, and now that's done. I'm gonna go ahead and come back over to stream here. And then now we have, um, let me see here. Oh, the event severity, it didn't drag that over. I'll have to probably go back and do that. But let's go ahead and do event severity here.
there we are. And let's say, um, it will event severity equals, let's say we want to do anything that's uh, maybe four, event severity four level. And I'm going to go ahead and search here. And now I'm seeing any of these um, messages at the uh, event severity level. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can actually look for. And one thing maybe if you want to highlight terms within this, um, let, let's say we want to look for ASA-4. Um, you know, we can start highlighting some of these different um, parts. Uh, if we want, if we know what the event or the error message is, then we can start highlighting exactly what that message is and then start to going through all the logs. Now, I mean, let's say that um, searching for data very quickly is, is, you know, hey, maybe I, I could still go through my syslog, the management we have. Um, you know, the, the function that you're showing me is, is exactly, you know, what we're, we're showing right now. One thing that I really like about the log piece right here is if I hit live streaming data, what I'm doing is I'm actually looking for, I'm actually going to clear this out here. If now what I'm doing is when I'm live streaming data, this is actually showing me the messages from all my logs that are directly coming in. And it's just like a tail dash F. So rather than me going onto the syslog server or going onto a particular device, I could do a tail dash F and I could specify the host name and then only get logs from that host. So rather than me jumping from one system to another, that you know, that, that provides uh, a, a lot less, uh, you know, time savings on what we could do. So um, that just kind of gives you a little bit more of the log. Um, one thing I do want to share uh, real quickly is the log rate. So let's say we wanted to create a machine learning job that will detect anomalies and increase the amount of logs. Usually if we see a lot more logs, um, there could be an issue. Um, if we want to, to alert based off of a particular event that we see, we could also do that. Um, and that, that alert could be sent to, let's say, your email or Slack or uh, to the team. You know, there's a lot of different uh, ways to alert based off of this data. Now, that's just showing just the log dashboard. I, I want to quickly show, um, you know, if we go back to, let me go um, back to some of the metric data. Um, actually, probably easier if I go here. Now, one of the things that I also did um, is I included uh, a lot more data into this demo. So not only am I sending that syslog data into Elasticsearch, but I also stood up like a Windows box and I'm sending Windows uh, log information, um, what's called uh, packet beat, which is looking at the network interface for that particular uh, network or for that, that, that uh, Windows machine. And of course, uh, the lightweight agents can be deployed in a lot of different ways, a lot of different orchestration tools. Um, but if you have the, the network information on the uh, system that you're monitoring, then we can see some other data uh, network coming into um, Elasticsearch or data that, that, that we're uh, viewing the data from um, the Windows machine and what it's connecting to. So for example, I have WinLogB, and this is just some uh, of the visualizations that we can see here. Um, I'm going to jump really quickly over to the networking view. And what we're seeing here is the lab is based in, in, you know, in California, but we see a lot of different connection points that are going on. We can see connection points that are going on from um, uh, Washington, uh, looks like uh, Edgeport. Um, let's see here. Uh, we can see a lot of other data that's being sent all around. So not only can we get a viewpoint of where the, uh, the data is coming from or the traffic is going to, we can get some other specifics about what, uh, you know, what some other uh, other data receiving. So I'm gonna close this window out here. And if we're looking, this is some of the data that we load into uh, Elasticsearch by Kibana. So we see here, we have um, a lot of uh, unique visitors to the site. Uh, we can see, uh, you know, by country code, we could see by different OSs. Um, so the way that we could visualize this data, and this is the law, uh, the dashboards that are preloaded for you when you're, if you're using that, that B module. So we can kind of see the, the these different connection sources here. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, running out of uh, physical me memory on my side, so um, joy. Uh, but the log source and destination key, uh, you can see different uh, connection types from, um, let's say, from China um, or, or actually, I think this is not China. This is um, from Indiana or actually from Japan. So we can saw these these different network flows um, and visualize that to see you know what's actually going on within the network. So let me go back to my slides here. 
Okay, so as we can see here, what we're doing is we're grabbing all these modules, the file beat, metric beat, auto beat, and packet beat. All these different modules have a specific task, lightweight agents that are gathering data, let's say on metrics, CPU memory, um, that we're getting information on audit or packet information. And we're actually sending all that data into Elasticsearch. So if you think about this from, not just from the network perspective, but across the whole organization, the, what we see typically for across the observability stack is we have a lot of different people uh, that have different tools and different uh, responsibilities. You know, your 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 operations or your um, um, your NOC might be looking at the network piece uh, or network uh, data or infrastructure data. And let's say your developers are looking at the application performance side, and then you have a different team that does this. Right? So you have these different tools uh, uh, spread across the different parts of the environment. And really what we're trying to do is we're trying to unify this. So we're trying to grab this log data, metric data, APM, and uptime data into a unified view. So then you can, um, you as a network administrator, see what's going on with the network. If you're getting tapped on the shoulder, hey, the, our application's running slow. And you can look, well, I'm looking at the network and I can see that you know we're not really getting much data into the uh, you know, into our application. Yeah, let's figure out exactly why. Let's go on maybe, do we have a link status down or do we have an issue or something uh, something flapping on upstream? You know, do we have a downline? There's a lot of the things you can look at. But on the, the, on the other side of the coin, we have, hey, you know what? Um, I see, you know, plenty of network data coming through, um, but I actually look at the metrics here and it's very high CPU or memory. You know, can, can you take a look at this with me? Or can someone else on the, um, that's seeing the same view, yeah, I see that too, let me do some investigation about that. So it's it's a part of bringing that unified viewpoint for uh, across the entire organization. So I think that that, uh, that data points that you bring into Elasticsearch and in Kibana is very powerful. And that's kind of what we're doing is there's no silos and bringing all that, that in. And the last approach is, yeah, you can have logs, metrics, and APM all kind of stacked together in a, in a visual data point that you can look through and, and, and visualize that data and see what's going on. Um, one thing, I'm going to uh, do one. Uh, I, think, I think I might be two more minutes here. Um, I'm going to go back uh, one more time. Now, if we take a look at, for example, the metrics viewpoint, we can kind of see this in a live viewpoint. Um, so for example, if we kind of look at our inventory of uh, the data resources, we have you know, three different desktop systems that we're looking at. This is the, the log repo. This is the uh, dev box that we're using. And this is that Remoto 2. That's that Windows remote machine. It happens to actually be sitting on my environment and I have it um, a VPN over into Hank's lab and it's sending that data. But let's say, you know, if we take a look at this, um, we could take a look at metric based by CPU or memory usage or inbound traffic. Let's look at, Inbound traffic, yeah, there's 205 kilobits. That's really not much traffic. That's to be expected for a lab environment, right? Uh, or this one's 16 kilobytes. Well, let me, let's me let look at outbound traffic. Uh, how much outbound traffic? Oh, four times as much, 483 kilobytes. But what's interesting here is, is you can see that, hey, the load on this uh, is extremely high. Um, and we can look at these different metrics that are coming through here um, and log rates. But let's say, hey, I want to actually jump into the logs or view the metrics of this particular machine. And because we have all this data that's across the organization, um, or, um, you know, metrics, uh, logging, and application performance data, we get this unified view. So we can look at this. We can look at, okay, yeah, this is the core OS. This is the kernel version. Is it containerized? No. This is a, this is a physical um, machine that we're, that we're looking at. Here's the CPU usage, the load, the memory, and, of course, the network traffic. And I didn't spend too much time on specific network um, dashboards. and 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 uh, other than the e-commerce side. But if, if you look at some of that sample data, there's a lot of great dashboards to get started with. And to create dashboards or visualization is very easy. It's, it's like a, a click and drag and drop. And to show that real quick, uh, you know, if you look at visualizing this data, and I want to create a visualization, you can go to what's called Lens, and then what I can start doing is, okay, let's uh, you know, let's grab my host IP, you know, so then you can actually um, look at some of these data, our host name. I want to grab this. I can just drag it right on top, and then now I start to see some of that data being visualized real time. I can go to different options, and I can start to build my own visualizations that are that are important to me. So with that, I hopefully that kind of gives you. There, there's so much for me to cover. Um, there's so much for. 
uh, that, that we have that, that Elastic or Kibana has to offer. And hopefully I gave you a very high, uh, high view or the 10,000 view of what the capabilities are. So with that, Hank, do you have any, any questions or anything? Yeah, this was this was a great introduction. I've I've seen and poked at um, <clears throat> the Elastic Stack um, a few times before, but especially that start of the demonstration where you walked through like what did it take to get it installed and running was really helpful. And I'm looking forward to kind of taking the the information you've shared and kind of digging into it myself. Um, I want to talk a bit about that log ingestion stuff to start out with. So this is one of the areas we talked a bit about when we were doing the initial setup was that whole log stash and beats and how those go through. And we went with the beats model, which I think does seem to make a lot of sense, but I'm still not um, sure exactly how that works as far as where the log data goes. So the, the network devices are sending the syslog data to syslog ng, and then the beat takes the data from there to send it into Elasticsearch. But is it actually like move the data over so that now there's like a copy in Elasticsearch or is Elasticsearch like reading it live from the syslog files on the server? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So what it's doing is it's actually, um, so Elasticsearch is a, it, you know, it's a search engine and basically mm -hmm. it views every log message as a, as a document. And every component of that message, let's say timestamp, um, a field, you know, within the message, we could we can break that message down into different fields. So then we can categorically say, hey, I want to look at only Cisco ASA data, and we know that you know that log message in from the uh, Cisco ASA says Cisco.ASA. That's the message type, and then we can kind of sort based off of that. So we are copying the data from the syslog ng, and and have it inside Elasticsearch. So the data actually resides in Elasticsearch. Uh, for you to search. And in terms of data retention, there is different mechanisms where you can do what's called a roll up. Uh, so it rolls up the data only taking the 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 data that happens to be the outliers. Uh, so you can grab that data later. So you can actually reduce your footprint. Um, you know, if you want to duplicate that data, let's say for retention uh, or for uh, if the, the node goes down, Elasticsearch goes down, um, you can reload that data in or that data can uh, uh, is is you know self healing, so yeah, the the, the data actually does reside on Elasticsearch, okay. and then you can then visualize it through Kubana. So you can't. So like a workflow might be like every night you flush out the syslog ng files so that you don't end up with yeah. with giant files there because Elasticsearch is actually like keeping them on that side. That was one of the questions um, that I was I wasn't clear on that piece. Yeah. And then and Beats can also look uh, help you do some of that log rotation uh, rotation on syslog ng, mm -hmm. and then you can also do that on the syslog server. There's there's something that was called ILM, which is Index Lifecycle Management, that will go through and say, hey, after a week, I don't care about the data. I just want you to automatically delete that. So there is some some um, retention um, maintenance there. Okay. And the beats themselves, there's a question that came in. Do you install the beats on the Logstash server? If I understood this right, the beats actually get stored with wherever the data source is. And so if the Logstash server is also your syslog server, you would have put them there. But if it was a beat gathering information from hosts or something else, those would get installed on those actual hosts, correct? Exactly. Yep. So beats is installed where the data resides. Okay. If you don't want to use a beat, that's fine. You can use a log stash. So basically, kind of what you're saying, the data still resides on um, the syslog server, mm -hmm. and you're sending that that data to a log stash. And what it's doing is it's it's reading that data and doing a, a processing of that and sending it to Elasticsearch. Now you can have that data saved on log stash. Let's say if if there is a network uh, issue or log stash happens to, to, to you know have an issue, you can restart Logstash and then it resumes that, that data there. So it's kind of a, a, a cache for you to keep that data. Okay. And then as far as like the, um, the data pieces, one of the, the, the jokes I've always had around like network monitoring systems is these just, they just grow and they bloat and they bloat over time because nobody wants to throw data away. I think in general, people just say, we'll just keep it forever. Data is cheap. Um, it, and why you get a seven gig uh, syslog yeah. file, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but the what I'm trying to figure out is, let's say I, I I deploy an Elastic Stack and I'm using it to gather these pieces, and then over time, like I, I do, I don't want to get rid of data. I want to keep it. 
What's the process of like expanding that out? That was one of the pieces that I, I thought was, my understanding was there was a way to like horizontally scale up your Elasticsearch yeah. as data goes through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there, there's a lot of different methods to handle this. And, and the short answer is, um, yeah, uh, Elasticsearch by default, you know, you horizontally scale and that data then is, is um, uh, for the better terms, striped across uh, your, your notes, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, and that data, and we use uh, uh, Lucene's under the scene um, uh, under Elasticsearch. And we're doing indexing and indexes and it saves that data across the multiple clusters. So basically as you're adding more nodes, uh, you're adding more resources for search as well. Um, and you can even spread that, that across. But let's say you're very constrained on, on your Elasticsearch cluster, then you can start to move your data into let's say uh, you know, from hot, which is where you're indexing the data, stuff that's coming right now, you can transition that to, let's say, uh, less cost storage, let's say warm, so you can still search that data. And then, and then of course, to cold uh, uh, data, so you can, uh, let's say, up the, uh, upload that to a blob storage or object storage like S3, and still search that, knowing that there might be a search consequence, you know, data that's a, a year out, yeah, I don't need a, that data right right now um, that we're known for being a fast search engine, but I can go out and do that to let's say a cold storage. So there's a lot of different me methodology of either rolling up the data to getting the data that you want. Um, so you discard a lot of data, moving that to distrib uh, horizontally distribute so you can keep that data fast and ac accessible or move that to cold storage where you know there's lower cost storage, but I know there's gonna be a performance hit just from the storage performance side. Sure, no, that makes sense. And then, so you you did the initial deployment with a single Elastic node and a, a single Kibana, great for demos. Now, if I can you take one that's deployed kind of standalone like that and add additional clusters and grow, or, or is it one of those cases where you have to start one way or another, whether you're gonna be standalone or clustered? No, absolutely. And, and one of the links that was provided is starting Elasticsearch mm -hmm. um, with uh, Docker. There's actually an example for Docker Compose that will automatically roll out uh, three nodes um, automatically for you, and the and then that way you can kind of start playing around. But yeah, adding a Docker node is um, you'll notice the envir environment variable that we put on. It's just changing the environment variable to say, hey, I want to join these ex existing cluster. So you can keep continue to add on and, and scale out from a Docker perspective or even mm -hmm. from a, a Java process. So yeah, you can continually go. I just didn't want to overload the memory on the dev box. I didn't want to. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> there was a lot going on there, so I didn't want to. I, I, that's why I deployed as one, and I also want to be very simplistic uh, of of getting yeah. started. So, okay. Now, and I don't want to go like super um, competitive in comparisons in this one, but there are there's a couple of questions that have come through, and in there's all of these different tools for telemetry and logging and monitoring out there. There's the Elastic Stack, there's Grafana, InfluxDB, mm -hmm. there's the Splunk that's out there. Are there? How do you? How do you explain the differences between these and, and kind of the highlights and where does Elastic Stack fit against some of these other solutions that folks may be looking at? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's interesting. I think um, you know, there's a lot of uh, companies that are that are doing observability um, mm -hmm. that use Elasticsearch behind the scenes uh, from an open source perspective. So that's one of the advantages, you know, open source, you, you can allow uh, a lot of different observability companies, either uh, uh, SaaS-based uh, or not, they're using Elasticsearch behind the scenes to do that. Um, so that's that's just kind of a, a neat little thing to, to talk mm -hmm. about. Um, if you see a search box somewhere out in the field, other than maybe on a web browser, more likely it's Elasticsearch running behind the scene. <laughs> the, not to go in too, in too depth, but uh, Elasticsearch is unique in the fact that um, we're just looking uh, we're a search engine, right? So it doesn't matter what data you're, 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 or what format you're providing it. Uh, there's a lot of use cases that overlap. For example, that logging, monitoring, or observability overlaps with security. Um, you know, if there is a high sp spike in CPU on a machine, um, then there might be some actors going on there. Let's figure out exactly what's going on. Or, hey, this person never accessed that file before. You know, we could see that within the networking. Hey, this IP is is attaching to this IP. You know, what does that look like? Um, you know, uh, a lot of people use uh, Elasticsearch for, um, you know, as a part of a search engine or as a part of their application. So you have all this data. We have a, a unique viewpoint of looking at all of the different types of data and bringing that together in a unified view. So as opposed to, let's say, another competitor, you might have to jump through different windows and different systems and different components that are, are kind of bolted on. Uh, that's mm -hmm. not 
you know, I, what I showed you is, is exactly what you get. We're just sending the data, and then basically I'm searching uh, based off of that. Hopefully that, that answers the, the question. Yeah, and obviously every every platform is going to have strengths and weaknesses and use cases that they fit into, but it's just yeah, one of absolutely. those tools of, of seeing what's there. Yeah, absolutely. And then the best thing is it's open source. It's something mm -hmm. that you can download and try and 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 use for yourself. And it's you know and, and you know the there are enterprise features on top. There's no enterprise version. Mm -hmm. The open source is the version. There's plugins on top. There's a lot of things uh, that that we provide on top of that, but. Yeah, I mean that's the best thing is is open source. Download uh, the Docker and Kibana and and see what you come up with. Now, here's a case. One of the things, one of the reasons I started hearing about Elasticstack was because a lot of application developers, system uh, developers, web developers were using it to gather their own logs. And so I would imagine many folks out there may have inside of their organization already an Elasticstack stood up that other teams are using. So my question is, if I'm a network engineer, should I go stand my own up? Or should I go use one that's already there? Yeah. So, and that's a great question. Um, so, I, I would, you know, the that's more of a, I would say, is organizational question in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, if, if 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 the if we're in a Nirvana right now, I would say use the same Elasticsearch cluster. Mm -hmm. There may be different um, business units and uh, different, you know. They, you know, they let's say uh, one business unit exclusively does the e-commerce site, and then. And that you know, I, all of your IT monitoring is also with that business unit, and they have their own cluster. Yeah, you can, you know, send your data there, and they can have their own cluster. Um, there's a lot of BI tools. There's a lot of SLAs, SIOs, and, and things that you want to track for. That could be a separate cluster. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of times, I think what's the power of uh, the power of Elasticsearch is using that same Elasticsearch cluster, that one cluster, so then you can look at all the different pieces of data, and you have that in, over a single view. Um, one thing that I really talk about here is, is let's say there are many different Elasticsearch clusters across the organization. We have something that's called cross-cluster search, so you can search across other cl uh, clusters. So you as a network administrator, let's say you stand this up, you want to grab some data, but then you need to grab some data from the um, application performance team. They have their own cluster. You could do a cross-cluster search over to their data and get that visualization there. So. The answer is it's it's yes you can do it in one cluster and you get that unified view but if you can and let's say because of the different business re reasons you have your own cluster you could still do the cross cluster search across a lot of other clusters. So let's say I'm a network engineer and I know that my I, I found who is running the the elk stack at my organization and I want to go kind of make the case to let them let me send data to them. Any any pointers, suggestions, things that that I might be able to tell those those folks that that reduce their stress level of letting me put extra data is have you seen things that help when when organizations or different teams want to like leverage the same the same stack? Yeah, I, I think it's a lot of show and tell. I, mm -hmm. I think what happens is they uh, a team adopts the the Elastic Stack. They they see the benefits there, and they can you know, not only show it from a business perspective of lowering times to uh, uh, resolutions for for issues, um, but if you know there's you know the networking obviously is is a huge part of the ecosystem in the infrastructure side, right? So, you know I you always hear oh it's always the network problem or it's always a DNS problem or it's whatever. It's like well no I'm we we can actually show you that that it's not, but let's hook in some of your data into that yeah. and and actually get some of that, right? So it's it's all about working together and and bridging that that gap of, of getting information. But it's a lot of show and tell. And there you'll mm -hmm. see, um, I'll, I'll provide a link later after this about you going on to a demo, uh, Elastic demo, and then running a demo yourself or loading some of that data, um, that pre-canned data for you. So in Kibana, you could say, use our sample data, you know, and say, hey, you know, would you like to see this? Uh, I'll, I'll provide you a URL once you log in and look at some of the dashboards and see, hey, I know this is not our data, but let's actually start send some of the data and see what we can come up with. So that's kind of my suggestion. It's definitely a show and tell, and 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 see what 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 is done for you as a team, and and kind of propose what that can help with other teams and that unified view. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And then one of the things that always seems to come up when we talk about logging, particularly trying to look at logs across multiple systems together and correlate information, time becomes really important. Yeah. Is that one of those things that's kind of like you have to make sure that you've got a good time synchronization across the environment if you're going to get a lot of value out of something like this? Or can 
the ingestion into sys into elastic stack like kind of fix that by just serializing on order though that doesn't seem like it's a really good solution like what's your how important is is good timing um across your systems yeah so what's what's great um and, and there's a lot of different ways to tackle this um mm -hmm. you know it's funny i think the the suggestion the support side of me is saying hey just have everything as utc and then we'll call it good right obviously yeah. that's <laughs> that you no, know, that's that's the nirvana I think all this might try to go for. Mm -hmm. um, but what what happens is so Kibana uses your local time zone to translate all that that time data. Mm -hmm. So as I'm bringing the data in, let's say you know I'm in uh, I'm from Denver. Um, we know the labs in um, in California, um, and and those times are different. But when I'm looking at the data, it's assembling that data based off my time zone. So I'm actually looking at it. Now it's not manipulating or changing the data. So let's say, you know, Hank, you open your Kibana dashboard, you're going to see all of the data relative to you, to your time zone. So it's, um, you know, you don't have to figure out, okay, it's negative six. Oh, wait, no, it's going to be negative seven because it's a time zone or a daylight savings time. And, oh, no, this is actually located here. Mm -hmm. So there's, 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 uh, we, we eliminate a lot of that. Now you can also specify as you're ingesting the data into Elasticsearch to change that to UTC. Okay. So as the data comes in, let's say from a different time zone, um, and it's local to that, you can also manipulate the data into UTC. So then all the data you're seeing is all UTC. So there's a lot of ways that you can 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 change or manipulate that data or, or handle that problem. Okay. Um, we're the time on these always goes so fast. I got one last question for you before we close down. We spent a lot of time kind of on the syslog portion of the data, and a question just came in, which is a great one, and I, I don't know the answer is there's other types of data and, and information we get out of the network, SNMP, NetFlow, there's even kind of new modern streaming telemetry type of data. Yes, yes. Is there a way to pull that in so that we can get things like network interface metrics right off of switches and routers and CPU graphs and things that don't necessarily hit syslog? Yeah, and the answer is yes to all of that. <laughs> oh, good. Um, so you know, IoT. You know, there's different sensors you can grab data from from different sensors. Um, you know, we're we're integrating with like Prometheus. Uh, we're mm -hmm. using uh, as a part of our one thing I didn't really touch on is the application performance monitoring piece, which uses uh, open tracing or distributed tracing. So we see that a lot now with like the Kubernetes. Um, ecosystem and bringing some of that data into it. So we use open tracing uh, uh, or distributed tracing as a part of that methodology. But yeah, I mean, we, we see, it's funny, um, I was helping out somebody that was, um, before we were in the, uh, you know, the stay at home and the pandemic, uh, we were looking for um, um, UN data off of flight data. Um, and that data is very esoteric. It's, it's looking at um, trajectory for flights, altitude, mm -hmm. Um, speed, um, also looking at uh, link status space, uh, link status for um, uh, Wi-Fi over the, the airplane and bringing all that telemetry data into Elasticsearch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's yet a log format that I have seen that we haven't been able to handle. And if it's a new format that just comes out, then we see a lot of new community members uh, building out beats specifically for that format. So I want to stress it's any format, any log messages, and you didn't have your logs, any signal data um, okay. from from that, absolutely, you can you can use and ingest into Elasticsearch and search on. Great. All right, well, we are coming to the top of the hour. Any final thoughts for our audience today? No, I, I want to say thank you so much for having me, Hank. Um, you know, it's funny is I, I kind of felt scatterbrained because there's so much to show and there's so much that that's there. And hopefully you got, uh, you know, everyone out, out there that's listening, you got a really good viewpoint of the capabilities or kind of, you know, scratch your curiosity itch about, hey, maybe I can start bringing some of this data in and, and, and doing that. And again, we're very proud that we're open source, uh, you know, and we're the community that that's been built around this is 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 vast and great and very active. So. Uh, we want to uh, encourage you to, to try it out and see what you think. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you for joining. I'm looking forward to taking all the stuff that you've shown us and you're going to share and then start to build that back into to make our DevNet sandboxes and labs even better. So everybody, keep, stay tuned for that. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here and close this down. All right, this brings us to the end of another Net DevOps Live episode. Thanks, Big thanks to George for joining us today. Now, if you are looking for the webinar resources for today's episode, as always, you can find them both inside of the webinar platform itself, but also up on NetDevOps Live uh, under the webinar resources for today's episode. 
And then it wouldn't be a Net DevOps Live if I didn't pose a code exchange challenge. So I want to um, start doing event-driven something. We're getting syslog information. We're going to figure out how we can gather that up, make it programmable and accessible. Let's let's come up with ways to take actions based on those. Maybe every time a, a device, um, uh, the configuration changes, you send yourself a chat message. Or if you're playing with any of those IoT lighting systems, like blink your lights green every time a device configuration changes. Just get used to kind of monitoring the health and status of our networks and see what we can kind of build off of on top of that. Now, if you are looking for more about NetDevOps itself, of course, we've got tons of resources up on DevNet. Um, we are at the end of the third season, but th we've got lots of great episodes and content back from season one and season two available for streaming up on NetDevOps Live today. Our blog series continues to grow. And if you're still just getting started in network programmability at all, please do check out the Network Programmability Basics video course. It's an excellent way to jumpstart into all of the foundational topics necessary to explore these areas. Now, this is the end of season three. I want to thank everybody for joining us. It was an excellent seven weeks where we heard from leaders in the kind of network automation community from Ansible and GitLab. We, we learned all about Batfish and network health and validation. Uh, Kevin Corbin, a longtime friend of the series, was back from HashiCorp showing us what was there. We looked at Postman and REST APIs. Uh, we dove into the source of truth with Jeremy Stretch, the founder of Netbox. And then today's great season ending with George looking about logging and how Elasticstack can help us. All of this content is all available up on NetDevOps Live so that you can check it out today. And do stay tuned. I don't have anything specific I can announce around season four yet, but we are looking at that to continue our show along. If you have any more questions, please do stay in touch. You can find me at hapresto at cisco.com on Teams or email, hfpreston on Twitter. And I always encourage everybody to follow Cisco DevNet on all the social medias for the latest and greatest about anything related to Net DevOps and programmability. And with that, that's the end of our episode for today. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.